So I've built command line applications using Python's arg pass before, and it works well. It's good. It takes the arguments that you give it from the command line and passes them into your application. But then I found Typer, which is by the same guy that made Fast API, and I thought I would give it a go. So in this video, we're going to run through a quick demo project, and we're going to see what it's all about. Uh, one of the reasons why I liked it, if I have a look at the examples here, is that it's basically like building a web application. You can see we have this app here and then the app.command with the functions underneath that are going to run when that command is run and it's all tied together with this app run at the end okay so let's give it a go I've got NeoVim open here ready to do everything so I'm going to import a few things in first now I've already pip installed everything that I need so we're going to be using uh, typer request select olac identic at the end and rich as well so the first thing that we saw that we needed was this app declaration here so this was going to essentially instantiate our type of application here this is going to give us access to everything then we saw we could do app.command as a decorator and then pass in something here so let's just call this one uh, test and we're going to say we're going to give this a name which is a string and then we'll just basically print out the uh, name I've been working on my uh, typing a lot recently uh, in case you couldn't tell uh, and now we need our main and then just app like this so I'm going to save this uh, and we're going to run it we're going to do python3 our main.py you can see that we are missing an argument name so we can pass that in let's put john and it's going to print that back out so you can kind of see how this is starting to kind of come together so what we put in here is the command uh, and if we had multiple uh, ones of these like this let's put the another one here let's give ourselves a little bit of room and instead of a test we said um, name we'll put name there and instead of this here we'll just print in uh, test here like this just so we can like differentiate so if we call python3 main and then test we get that function which just comes back and then python3 our main and we called it name and we're going to give it this we get our name back here so now we are calling the argument here the the function and then whatever we put in goes here okay so now that that kind of like makes a bit of sense hopefully you can see how it's all going to come together i'm going to remove these because we don't need them and we're going to start working what we're going to do is we're just going to create a simple cli app that we can give it a asin which is an amazon identification number and we can then get some basic information from that uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is we'll recall the we'll rename this and we'll just call this one get price and I'm going to say that we're going to give this an ASIN which is going to be a string like this we can get rid of that now so inside this function we're going to make the request to the server the website for the information and then we're going to pass it so the first thing we'll do is we'll just have our uh, response is equal to requests requests dot get and then we'll give it the uh, https uh, amazon.co.uk slash dot co dot uk slash dp then slash and then we need to give it the uh, asin that we are actually going to be passing into this function just like we would a web application uh, but to actually get this to work we need to have our headers set we need to send amazon a actual uh, proper user agent so we'll have our headers equal to a new dictionary and the first is user agent like this and that's going to be equal to a string which i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste because it's easier let's format that so it's nice and neat format with black uh, and now we can then put in our headers into our actual request headers is equal to the headers dictionary that we've got and then we can print out our response dot text like so this is enough now to actually get the basics of this working because we only have one app.command we don't actually need to pass in anything else we can just go ahead and send it in with our python3 main.py and then this asin which i just grabbed uh, randomly from amazon so I hit enter and we can see all this information is coming back so i can tell now that it's working and if you're scraping amazon you get a little meowing duck or whatever it is at the end you know you're on the right track so now we just want to pass that information so instead of printing out the response.txt i'm going to say that my html is going to be equal to 
HTML parser, and I'm going to give it the response dot text here. This is going to give us this HTML variable that contains that all that we can actually pass out the bits that we want using select OLAX. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new dictionary called item. And I'll say that this is going to be the ASIN, which is the ASIN that we're passing in to the uh, uh, into this uh, into the command into our program here and then we want to say the price so we'll just grab the price of it here now I'm not going to go into the details of scraping Amazon if you want that I'll leave a link to another one of my videos price is almost always in these one of these selectors so we're going to use CSS first on our uh, on our HTML this is going to use CSS selectors to grab the first matching element that's going to match the CSS selector we're going to put in which is I think it is span dot a dash off screen this is the one that normally has the price in it in amazon so we're going to do dot text and then dot strip to remove any extra white space which is inevitably going to be around this element and then we'll print our item out and that should work so let's save and we'll run it again and hopefully we get that information back there we go, we got it. We can see that we have the I the ASIN and the price returned to us for that item. So this is good, this is a good start, but there's a few holes here. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do actually is just from Rich, we're gonna import in print, and that just makes it a bit nicer when I print to my terminal so you guys can see everything. Now the next thing is that I want to do is I want to add in some kind of data classes because we are handling data now within our program and it makes sense to utilize the functionality that data classes or something similar, I mentioned it at the beginning that we're gonna use, will help us with. So we are gonna use Pydantic. Uh, we're gonna be able to create a couple of models then just to hold our data. That's gonna give us that ability to A, do some validation, which we're gonna to wanna to do, and B, just to uh, give us the flexibility and uh, make our program a little bit more robust. So I'm gonna do from Pydantic, import base model. So I'm gonna create two models, and the first one is going to be the ASIN, because this is going to be the ASIN that we're expecting to come into the system, and this is gonna be from base model. And this is gonna have an ID, which is going to be a string. And the next one we're gonna create is going to be our item, which again, base model, and then we're going to say this is going to have an ASIN, which is going to be of type ASIN. So you can see that this is now relating to the first model that we created. And the second one is price. I'm going to leave this as a string for the moment because you can see that it's coming back with the pound sign. So it is a string. If you wanted to, you could then do something here to make it so that it's converted into a floating point number or whatever you wanted. So this is a good start. So let's go ahead and put this in here. So instead of this item like this, what we want to do is let's remove these lines. We want to create an actual item using our ASIN. So we will do item or actually we'll call it new item, which is equal to uh, type of item. The ASIN is going to be equal to the ASIN that we pass in and the price is going to be equal to, I've just deleted the whole string, but it needs to be html.css first, and this is where we're getting that information from, so span.a-off screen, like this, dot text, dot strip. Now I'm going to leave these dot text and dot strip here, but you absolutely could put this into the class itself, uh, and let's just go ahead and do print new Item so it doesn't complain. Now you can see that I'm actually asking for an ace in here and it's saying that it can't actually have that type because I'm saying that our item base model ASIN is actually a type of the ASIN class. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that our new ASIN is equal to the class of the ASIN class that we've created. Where's it gone? ASIN, there we go. And our ID is going to be equal to the ASIN that gets passed in from here. So the, the, the the command line that we pass in, that ID goes into and creates this base model here. So we have that information there. Now we just need to change this to this. So we do new, like so, new ASIN.ID. So we pass that information in there. And then here we can do exactly the same ASIN and it should just be new asin because we're passing it in. Now this doesn't need the dot id because this is the whole class that is expecting up here. So let's save and run and just make sure, see if I've done anything wrong. 
okay i have and we can see that we do get some very nice error errors when we do this okay and that's because i missed off my brackets there so we save now and run again we should get that working nicely there there we go now we have this nice printout here where we can see we're returning a type of our item and all that cool information is sorted nice and neat in there so one last thing that i want to do is um, maybe add in some text so we know what's happening so we're going to say under our here we'll do print uh, getting price for and we'll put in the um, we can just do it like this new asin dot id okay great so that's a nice print statement there and we're going to add in here a response uh, dot uh, raise for status just so if it, we get a 404 or something like that it stops our project uh, stops our program right there okay so let's write and close and run again because you're getting price for this and there we have the information back so as you can see this is quite a nice and easy way to write command line applications using python i've only used one command here but if you're interested in this and you want to grab this code you could then go ahead and add this to this add another command in to do something else or go ahead and add in getting more information from here so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have it would be great if you would like this video comment and subscribe that always helps me and this video right here is going to be more about scraping Amazon, which you might find interesting if you've not done any of that yet and you've just landed on this video. 